Allah Rabbul Izza honored me and you with a religion, the focus of which is success. Like the focus of the entire religion is success. You can't deny that. Anytime five times a day you hear the screamer or the mu'adhin call at the top of his lungs, Hayya ala al-falah, come towards success. You can't deny that the entirety of religion is focused upon success. There's not another system on the face of this earth in which someone comes out five times a day to tell you come to success move towards success the, and if you study at depth every aspect of the, the, the deen it is designed to make you successful as our sheikh said Umar al -Banna, not only in the akhirah but successful in this life and in the next i will give certain examples psychologists say that the most productive emotion is the emotion of gratitude you know, if in your heart you feel grateful, you will be very productive. You will be at the top of your game. You will be at your best. And successful people, as in people who are the heads of industry and who are uh, CEOs and entrepreneurs, you know, successful by the definitions of man, they are people who will go to sleep and then wake up and then before they wake up, the system is to kind of keep your eyes closed and for the first couple of minutes, you just remember the favors that is in your life. You know, you go, thank God my eyes work, my body is working. Alhamdulillah, I am alive. Look, I have a bed. Oh my God, I have a blanket. There's a roof over me. They, do you understand me? And as you go through this, it sets the tone for your day. And it's a tone of gratitude which builds success. Now they have discovered this now you know, in the 2000s, to be grateful. Now let's look at your deen, and the deen of Muhammad, alayhi afdal salatu wa tammu taslim, when the Rasul was alive, it was in the desert. Now the desert is very hot. The water is very scarce. With limited water, food is very scarce. With food, limited food, you're hungry, wealth is very scarce. And when the uh, people from Mecca migrated to Medina, there wasn't much shelter either because, and you see the Ashab al Sufa, they used to be sitting, you know, sleeping outside. So, yet the Prophet taught these people with such little physical wealth that before you wake up, or as you wake up, you say, Huh? Alhamdulillahi alladhi ahyana ba'da ma amatana wa ilayhi al-nushur. Thank you, Ya Rabb, for giving me life after having taken it from me last night and to you was my return. And you say it in Arabic, but you don't know its meaning. Your mom and dad taught you, and most of you don't even say it. I can vouch for you. But they were Arabs, you see. They spoke in their own language. So to him, it was, thank you, Ya Rabb, for giving me life again. Not just wealth, life again. Can you imagine what it did to his psyche? And then he goes to the bathroom. He finishes. What does he say? Alhamdulillah. Thank you, Ya Rabb, for taking away the filth from me. He eats. Alhamdulillah. He drinks. Alhamdulillah. His whole life was gratitude. And psychologists say to be at the top of your game, as in uh, be a more successful version of yourself, you need to be grateful. Do you see when I tell you that the deen was designed to make you successful, only you have... And ha have a look at this. I studied the life of successful, according to, you know, human definitions, you know, heads of industry, entrepreneurs, leaders of big institutions, prime ministers. I searched and researched their lives and I found certain traits you know they are all early raisers they wake up very early all of them almost unanimous they wake i read you know between 
4 o'clock and 6 o'clock is their wake up time. Although work starts at 9. Yet they wake up early. So what do you do? They don't answer emails. They wake up and they meditate. Or they read what they call motivational texts. To inspire them for the rest of the day to you know to pick them up and what do you do or what did the Dean prescribe for you to do in the morning after you have said you know your hamd you wake up you do your wudu you stand in salah and fajr is long recitations of the most motivational text man is ever to know the divine word of Allah himself. And then you sit and do your wird, your adhkar. Try this for those of you who haven't. Try to sit and do your adhkar for 30 minutes, you know, before you go. See what it does to you for the rest of the day. I do my word in the car in these days because you know Fajr is late and I tell you and I don't say this you know to blow my own trumpet but I by the time I get to work my heart is dancing like Allahu Akbar let's go why because the Deen was made to give you the best of this life and the best of the next and that is why the verse Allah Rabbul Izza says, وَمَنْ يُطْعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا You want to be successful? Obey Allah and obey the, the Rasul. Follow the path that they put you on. You, you can't help but be successful. Follow the mannerisms, the, the etiquettes, the emotional intelligence, the adab, the manners, the characteristics with which the Prophet guided you, you can't help but be successful. And success, as our Sheikh said, is not money, Muslims. Real success, ultimate success, is at the time of death. You know, they say these life coaches and the rest of it. Imagine your casket, your coffin is there and then see if you have led a successful life or not. So I want to mention a story with you and I've got seven minutes. I want to mention a story with you um, of a person who lived on the obedience of Allah and his prophet. And I want to highlight his utterance at the point of death. His name is Amir ibn Fuhayra. Whoever's heard the name, hands up. MashaAllah. And I will assume you've heard it, Sheikh, and you're shy. So we've got three people in the audience. Amir ibn Fuhayra was the freed slave of Abu Bakr as Siddiq. So beginnings are very simple. Slave, but he's been freed. Islam came and emancipated him. But he was loyal, so he stood in the service of Deen and to serve and help Abu Bakr radiallahu In the day of Hijrah, guys, I, please live this with me. Hijrah of the Prophet, the pretext of it was that tribes of the Quraysh, all of them decided to come and attack the Prophet at one go and kill the Rasul. So every tribe in Mecca have decided to kill the Prophet. Jibreel came, Ya Rasul, migrate. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam chose to leave Mecca and come to Medina. You would imagine that when a whole society wants to kill someone, it's a scary time to be alive. But Amr ibn Fuhayra in this difficult moment stood firm. So he was one of the very few people who knew the Prophet is migrating. He was the one who went and got the camels. He was the one that took food to the bottom of the uh, mountain to take it to the Prophet when he was in, you know, in Ghar al Thawr. He was the one that brought uh, Abdullah ibn Uraiq to them. He, you know, he was, he was the, the person standing in this difficulty and Allah blessed them to migrate with the Rasul and, and he migrated around the same time. Years passed, he's in Medina now, safety, and he's become, through his 
closeness to the Prophet and closeness to the Ashab and his obedience to Allah and his Prophet, he's become one of the most learned of Muslims. So a, a person came, a chief of one of the local tribes, he said, Oh Prophet, can you send us some teachers to teach my people? So the Prophet sent Ashab teachers to go and teach new Muslims. Amidst the group is Amr ibn Fuhaira. Teachers to teach a new people. As they travel to the tribe of this chief, on the way they camp at night or in the afternoon. And as they camp, they get ambushed. So they're busy with their campfires. A couple of them have gone and taken the camels out to graze. The rest of them are sitting, getting ready, and uh, ambush comes, and they kill them, you know, uh, merciless. Every one of them slaughtered, you know, stabbed, slaughtered, you know what I mean, killed. So the two or the three that had gone to graze the animals, they came back, and they saw massacre. So as you can imagine, emotions override, he screams, he, he jumps in to try to avenge his friends and they don't want to hurt him, they've tied him up. You know, they capture him. So he says, let me go and I'll show you what I'll do. So what will you do? I'll fight again. So they release him, he fights again, they tie him up again. But no one wants to kill, they've killed everyone else, but no one wants to kill these guys. It's a strange situation. So one of them said, come. Look at the dead. And the hadith is in Bukhari, but I'm joining it with another hadith for, for, for a more complete faham of the, because um, the understanding is limited otherwise. So he came and looked at all the, the slain Muslims and can you imagine these are your brothers in Islam taught brotherhood so he's crying obviously and they ask him is there anyone here missing who was amidst your camp but he's, he said yes there's one person missing so he said who is he so he said Amr ibn Fuhaira so he said, who was he amidst you? And he said, the best of us, you know, early Muslim migrant, helper of the Prophet in the Hijrah with the Rasul, the best of us. So he said, come. And he took him to a man who was dazed, you know, just looking out blank. His name is Jabbar not Muslim. He says, this is Jabbar. Jabbar, tell him what happened. So Jabbar said, I came from behind him, behind Amr ibn Fuhaira, and I got my spear and I dug it in his back and the blade came out of his front. The normal reaction you would anticipate as, you know, a scream, agony. So he went, oh, oh. and he looked and he saw blade has come out. And he put his hand under it in blood. And then he smiles and he says, Fuzstu wa Rabbul Kaaba. I succeeded by the Lord of the Kaaba. At the point of death, when you're supposed to cry, give wasiyah to you. I succeeded by the Lord of the Kaaba. So he says, I pulled the blade out like maybe I have missed it, you know. <laughs> and he goes, he went up. Can you imagine from the ground up? until he disappeared in the clouds. So his friend said, he goes, the angels took him. I succeeded by the Lord of the Kaaba. Because he lived a life 
on the obedience of Allah and on the obedience of the Rasul. And when death came, however it came, he was successful. And the greatest success, my dear brothers, as described by Allah and his Prophet, فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَازِ The one who traverses over Jahannam and enters Jannah, indeed he is successful. And the way to do it, وَمَنْ يُطْعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا Whoever obeys Allah and obeys the Rasul, whoever lives a life of a true Muslim على بصيرة with clear understanding of the deen, indeed he has become successful in this life and in the next. May Allah, Rabbul Izzah, grant me a new success in this life and in the next.